cutting away on the pedals. He will feel quite at home now. Conego comfortably sitting on his shoulders. It's a difficult day for Team Seiko because they are seriously under pressure. Well, the team has been under pressure since uh, Simone chose to go out so early on and take the leader's jersey. And nowadays, uh, he's put pressure on them for a week and they're cracking big time. These are the two men, teammates of Stefano Garzelli, Steve Zampieri and Oscar Masson. Now, if Garzelli comes up to this group, he's going to be in a big tactical advantage because he'll have two teammates in the group, whereas the other two men from Seiko will be completely isolated. There are no Seiko riders left in the group. Big acceleration here coming from Zampieri. He's been pretty aggressive on some of the mountain stages so far, and he too is riding pretty high up in the overall classification. He's going to try and get himself second over the top there. And just coming up as well, the man from Sonier Duval is, uh, Albert, is uh, Ruben Lobato. Franco Villa, the other man, is zipping up his uh, racing top, ready for the descent, short as it might be. Minute 22, the clock is still counting. Brad uh, McGee's still there as well, looking very comfortable. Not under... He's gone away again, and now Simone is having to chase him. Uh, Brad McGee dreaming of Saturday, a win in the time trial with a big enough margin to become the leader of the race again. Today is the only day that can spoil that for him, I think. But look at the size of that group. The group is actually splintering under the pressure of Brad McGee. And Brad McGee, as he goes over the summit of the climb there, is reducing the numbers in this group pretty dramatically. He's in fine form. You know, he's actually spent an awful lot of time through this winter looking at his diet. He's had some serious problems, intestinal problems, over the last couple of years. And just by controlling his diet, he seems to have put those all behind him. And he's changing as a bike rider. That's true. Interesting uh, irony is that he couldn't start the, the tour down under in Australia because three hours before the start he got food poisoning, so his diet wasn't working too well then. Yes, I think it was the uh, I think it was the shrimp cocktail he had before the start of the tour down under, and I don't think the team were very happy about that. But the lone leader now, Phil, is still holding on to a fair part of his advantage. Yes, one minute forty-six. The gap over the peloton being led by Simone, so he's saving the pink jersey for the team just now. They're going under there, the 15 kilometres to go. There's the order over the climb. The last official climb of the day, Zampieri over ahead of Lobata. And Mason Vila are the other two riders in that four-man chase. Uh, was 16 riders, but it's split all over the road right now. The race continues under the control of this young man. Will it be when we come back? We'll take a break. Oil and Thursdays are becoming one vicious cycle. At 8.30, join Lance Armstrong on a 13-part odyssey as he sets his sights on a sixth Tour de France victory. The Lance Chronicles. At 9, get the scoop on Lance and his rivals as they prep for the ultimate challenge on Road to the Tour. Then at 9.30, cycling season heats up as the world's best get in gear on the race of the week. Let it roll. Cycling Thursdays on OLN, starting tonight at 8.30. Out you go. This attack by Emmanuel Sella on today's stage of the Giro d'Italia. Just 11 kilometres to go for the finish. It's beginning to look like he might win the stage, but I don't think he will hold enough time to keep the race or to take the race lead. There's a lot of pressure here on the front end of the main field, and Garate. it really is quite remarkable to see Juan Manuel Garate going off the front of the pack right now. On the front, having to do all of the pacemaking, is last year's winner, Gilberto Simone, and he has not got any friends in this group at all. Sitting on his wheel there, Bradley McGee, looking very good. A little bit further down, Popovic, Cunego, all the big men at the top end of the overall classification, and it's pretty good to see up there as well, uh, Dario Cioni. Yes, and I just noticed Sergei Honshaw was in that group too, so they're all there uh, in that group. Uh, one or two names missing, but we don't know where they are right now because this field is in an act of desperation to try and chase down this race leader. On the road, that is, Emmanuel Sella. He's done a storming ride today, caught everybody off guard. Nobody marked him, and it looks like he might get the well-deserved stage win. Climbing up to the dizzy heights as we head down to the centre. Here we go at 10 kilometres to go, six miles to the finish, Paul. This guy is on the eve of his greatest moment. I tell you what, he didn't steal his victory away from anybody because no. he's been absolutely dominant. He's been over one of the toughest courses we've had at the Giro d'Italia so far this year, and he's been dancing up all of these little climbs, climbs that have kicked up to around about 18%. The chasers here, the second group on the road, are still around about a minute 15 seconds behind him, and the main field is really splintering, which is being led by Gilberto Simone, put very much on the defensive, as they try and keep the pink jersey on the shoulders of Damiano Cunego. 
this race is really taking a turn for the worse for Seiko. For the moment, it certainly is. You always get one bad day in a major tour. Maybe this is the one for Seiko. There's got no friends at all to help them chase back. In fact, Gardzelli was dropped on that previous climb. He's now reportedly back alongside Simone. So he has had a few bad moments himself. This is the chase group of six riders. They're just over a minute behind. And the peloton are trying to get in touch with that group. Here they come. Two riders, one of them Simone. He's got one teammate to come back now and help out. This is Christian Moreni here and he must be twixt the chase and the bunch. He's trying to ride across to the second group of riders on the road and a very good move by this man. We saw him a couple of years ago in Sicily racing in the rain as we uh, all try and pull this man back into the fold. Here's the 10 kilometre board for the chasers. I wonder if we'll get a clock on this as we go underneath. Looks like we won't. But there's the chase group at 10 kilometres. That was more than a minute uh, to the leader who, look at him go, he is not going to give this race up without a fight today. A new star is born again on today's stage of the Giro d'Italia. We'll take a quick break. Back and the action still very much on in favour, we have to say, of Emmanuel Seller because he looks to be moving ahead of this chase group. He's now nearly a minute and a half in front and the main peloton with a bit more reinforcements getting back for Seiko are behind that. Well, two riders from Seiko seem to have recovered from somewhere. Andrea Tonti has just come back into this group for Team Seiko and Leonardo Bertagnoli. But this man is doing a sterling ride. He's inside of the last 10 kilometres of racing. I just caught a quick glimpse there of Christian Moreni. He's actually bridged the gap from that leading group up to the chasers. So he's in the group behind, as is Marlon Perez, who at the end of the day should be the new leader in the Intergiro competition. This man that we're looking at here, though, Phil, Emmanuel Seller, is not weakening at all. There's Moreni. He's made the junction. And this is the man who's jumped away from the front end of the race with the leaders, uh, Juan Manuel Garati, the leader of Team Lamprey. Which indicates that Seiko are really having a bad time at this. Riders are getting away from the front of that peloton and are reaching the next group. Uh, but the boys from Seiko are having to work hard just to contain the rest of the race and the principal leaders or projected leaders of the tour in the last week. This rider is giving us a demonstration of what his career might hold for him in the next eight to ten years because first year pro looking uh, more and more inch by inch to be the first stage winner for him in the Giro d'Italia and that is a great result also for Panaria. They spotted a good one here. They certainly have. He needs to cross the line with around about a two minute ten second advantage over the Simone group if he's going to get himself the overall lead at the end of the day. He started the day 2.34 behind, but if he can hold on to the finish line, he'll get himself a 20-second time bonus as well. He's not showing any signs of weakening, but he needs to hold back just a little bit of energy because, unfortunately, we are on a flat section here as we head into the outskirts of Cesena, but these riders will turn off this road that's in the outskirts of town and go up a rather nasty little hill called the Madonna del Monte. This is quite remarkable because that is Garate, and he's got across the gap, so that would indicate, in fact, that the teammates of Gilberto Simone are not all that far behind. Garati sporting a bandage on his knee there from a, an earlier crash in the Giro d'Italia. This has been an unbelievable run in towards the finishing line today. Well, they should be riding just on 30 seconds behind that chase group, and Garati has come over the gap, and then it's just on two minutes to the main pack behind Sella. So Sella is heading now to the last little... Uh, corrugations of the region before we get down to the finishing line and the, the miles or the kilometers are ticking off in his favor right now and he's losing none of his enthusiasm for the chase we'll take another short break cunego's jersey under pressure but he's doing all right we'll come back in a moment champagne there as he waves to the crowd but we were so impressed by the way he just took that race and he never looked like slowing down. He was vi visibly racing so quickly. A 44 kilometer average for the day over this course was never in the remotest possibility. And yet he's done it, beating Christian Mareni, who came good in the end. He only reached the chasing group in the last couple of kilometers and got second place. Zampier, another late arrival, but a bit before Mareni, he got third. But remember that Cunego is still there. We saw it briefly. Uh, he is the uh, still the leader of the tour. There it is, 10 seconds ahead of Simone. This is the same amongst the leaders here. Figueras, the man Panaria we thought would use to attack, he didn't, and he holds his fifth place. And they've moved a man up the classification. We'll have to see where he slots in as we go down. But uh, that is uh, at the end of the day, no change amongst the leaderboard. But it has shown us today Seiko can be caught out. 
and it's also shown us, Paul, that Gardzelli doesn't have great legs. Gardzelli put under difficulty on a couple of occasions through the afternoon, but what I did take out of this race, race this afternoon was Bradley McGee is looking very good, and he's looking to be a big danger to take the overall lead away when we go down to the individual time trial on Saturday. This is going to be a very interesting tour from now on in, because over the last five days we've got 11 mountains, uh, plus, of course, the big finish in Milan. We've got the time trial on Saturday. That is going to be the first foundation for somebody to win this tour. And uh, Bradley McGee looking to reclaim that jersey because he will certainly outride Cunego in the time trial, but he's got to outride him by the best part of two minutes. There's no time bonuses offered in a time trial. So that might be a bit of a tall order, but he's got the distance and he's got the terrain. 52 kilometres of hilly roads. It could be McGee. Could be McGee, it could be Gonchar. This race is very far from over, and we could see the overall lead change a couple of times because after the individual time trial, another couple of flat stages, and then it's all mountains right the way down to the penultimate day here at the Giro d'Italia. And that's where Gilberto Simoni is going to have to take the race by the horns. He's not looked all that good so far, but neither have his challenges either. Men like Garzelli put into serious amounts of difficulty today. You can see we're still waiting for... Damiano Cunego to come up to the finishing line as the town here of Cesena celebrates Marco Pantani. But what a win, Phil, for this man, Emmanuel Sella. He took a lot of risks, and let's not forget, at one point in the race, he was actually on the ground. But he managed to get himself back up and onto his machine and recoup recuperate his nerves. The first is always the best, and this is a great victory here for Sella. Uh, here comes uh, Wegman on the and Cunego onto the podium. Could be a bit of a wait for Pataki, as far as I know, he's yet to finish. Uh, and he'll get the Mova jersey, or the Chicamino jersey, in points. That's a, a runaway for him at the moment. No points scored by him today. Cunegal got a few, actually. As he gets now his fifth pink jersey of the tour, which means he's led this race longer than anybody else. So he set himself a personal record there. Now, tomorrow should be a return to the days of Pataki, or anybody who dares to challenge him in the sprint finishes. It's a flat road to Trevisio, wants to see the World Championships. We'll be back with you, stage 12. Don't forget usual time, midweek. We're live, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 out there on the West Coast. Rhea will be at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Should be a good day tomorrow in many ways. And uh, Seller will remember today for the rest of his life because it was the day he took on the big names of the Giro d'Italia. He rode them all off his wheel and he finished alone in Marco Pantani's hometown of Cesena. And you can't do much better than that. Well, hope you're enjoying the continued coverage uh, with us on the Giro d'Italia. Tomorrow we'll be out on stage 12 or day 13, if we count the prologue, and we do. For Paul Sherwin, I'm Phil Liggett saying we'll see you tomorrow bright and early on the West Coast. Until then, goodbye.